Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, we had in, in the last session we discussed about the why we have to study about the farm and the consumer and consumer and the farm and we, we will be now extending the one period model to the next level and we will be trying to see that how we can define this representative consumer. So, here we assume that there is a representative consumer and this consumer has the well defined preference and this preference represented by what we call it as the indifference curve. And this indifference curve will show the choice between the consumption and leisure, which means that the consumption that we are saying, it is also reflecting that how much this representative consumer is earning. And leisure is the second product that this particular representative consumer will be thinking. So, this representative consumer has to make the choice that either whether he would like to have more consumption, less leisure or less uh, or more leisure, less consumption. So, under convex framework, downward sloping line, the indifference curve that we have. So, under convex framework, we will be trying to replicate this idea. So, the there is an implicit understanding in case of consumption and leisure. Consumption is directly linked to the income generating activity. So, he has to work, he will be spending some hours and the 24 hours that this representative agent has, it he or she is free to decide about how many hours he or she should be selling in the market. So, if whatever he or she decides to work for 4 hours, 5 hours, those things will be counted. Consumption when he, she earns and leisure when he, she forgoes the consumption as I mentioned above. The valuation of consumption C that we represent the consumption by C and leisure L are the two important variables in this model. The utility function is represented by C is the consumption, L is the leisure. So, here we have U is equal to C L and the we for the sake of simplicity, we try to capture both labor and leisure into the consumption bundle of the representative consumer. So, as I told in the beginning, this consumption and leisure both are normal goods, which means that when anything, when you have the price increase, you look for alternatives, but it is not the inferior goods, when we, which means that you, when you have income increasing, you will not be looking for that. So, that is not the case here uh, and any kind of foregoing phenomena is the common thing in case of the normal goods. So, there are some theoretical assumptions. So, here if you have read uh, Hall Avarian Intermediate Micro. Then there uh, we talk in detail about such properties, but here we have just mentioned about the strict case, not the the revealed preference that we have warp and sharp, sharp kind of analysis that we have not done. Here it is simple that here if utility from this bundle C1 L1, if it is greater than utility uh, bundle C2 L2. Then we say that the consumer is strictly preferring bundle U C1 L1 over U C2 L2, which means that the consumer is having more likeness and he thinks that he will have more utility by consuming U C1 L1. Similarly, here we have U C1 L1 which is less than U C2 L2. Now, this will be the opposite case which means that representative consumer strictly prefers bundles U2 L2 over C1 L1 and this implies that this particular bundle gives more utility. But here these two inequality conditions are not that important for me. For me the important is that at what level of consumption and leisure which bundle makes the representative consumer indifferent. So, here we have, here we have U C1 L1 is equal to U C2 L2 and that shows that representative consumer is indifferent between these two bundles, which means that whether he would like to have this bundle U C1 L1 or this bundle U C2 L2, both the bundles are going to give the same level of utility. 
second thing is the more is better now once i once i say about more is better now more is better is applicable because a consumer would like to have more of the of both goods he would like to consume more he would like to have more leisure but now it given the budget constraint that this particular representative agent is going to face he cannot have both increasing scenarios so but as a normal human being this representative consumer expects that he should have more of both lastly the consumption uh, consumption and leisure are normal goods then only we will have the scenarios under the convex setup and we are also not dealing so much with the complementarity and substitution so whether the goods are substitute and complement so those things will of course be part of once we are assuming the normal good but we are not dealing those cases here special cases here we are just trying to see that if we are deducing the macroeconomic model at the farm level then how it looks like so or at the consumer level then how does it look like so here we are seeing the consumption the consumer part then this representative consumer has the the convex well defined indifference curve and you have you must be aware those who are from eco they know that the indifference curve is the is is the downward sloping curve and it has certain characteristics certain characteristic that if you have a two bundles here which is having this characteristic that you are going to exchange with c1 minus c2 and i2 minus uh, i1 in this setup then it will be a uh, some kind of either you will be consuming more of one and consuming less of two but uh, it cannot be that you are you will be moving only on this particular line and on this line at any point will have the same level of utility just that you will be consuming more of one and less of of another but utility remains same on this particular line right so whether you move up and down but whether how where it is uh, at what level you are and there what will be your consumption bundle that's the only criteria that we choose so a and b may not be the appropriate case here but a will certainly have the more advantage in consumption less in leisure but a will be higher because this representative consumer in case of indifference curve we always say that if the indifference curve moving rightward this is going to give the better utility scenario so those things are mentioned here now we'll be talking about the representative consumers we also define that this representative consumer is going to have the marginal rate of substitution or the we also work out with the slope and slope we know that the slope of the indifference curve is nothing but the marginal rate of substitution since it is downward sloping so it has the minus weight because you are simply uh, foregoing something to get something better so in terms of consumption and leisure that we are assuming in this model it it is represented as uh, mrs lc l comma c and it shows the rate of substitution between leisure and consumption goods so here we have the slope of the indifference curve this particular line the a to b that we are mentioning so this can be called as c1 minus c2 l2 minus n1 but here we are talking about this particular slope right and you can easily see that here we have the, the uh, you, you you can also think about how the curvature of this particular line it decided about and if you just go by one a to point b so here you have the rate of transformation of both these goods at b you have a uh, less of consumption more of leisure at point a here you have more of consumption less of leisure then we are working out so from here it is clear that the representative agent is very normal case where we are not putting up any condition as such it is just the uh, marginal rate of substitution is not uh, it just the ratio of marginal utilities of these two goods l and c but here we have to keep in mind that we are not considering any case of uh, special cases like whether the consumption leisure are normal uh, whether the consumption leisure are the complementary goods or the substitutes so those things are not here we are just defining in the simple way so this is the utility part so we assume the representative consumer and we define that this is how the representative consumer when he or she has uh, has been given 
the choice to choose between consumption and leisure, then he will be following this route and these are the characteristics. Now, we will have the budget constraint. Now, in this budget constraint, you have to understand that as we have mentioned in the beginning that representative consumer has 24 hours represented by H, labor and leisure are represented by N and L. So, L is the number of hours that this particular labor is going to supply and L is the leisure. H is the total number of hours that this particular guy is having. So, everyone is having 24 hours out of this, this particular representative agent has to think about how many hours he would like to consume. The time constraint that the consumer faces. So, here this is the with regard to the, the utilization of the total number of hours, uh, it is leisure plus the number of hours that the, lab, uh, the representative consumer supplies in the market. So, here it is L plus here it is N S. Now, consumption goods acts as a number here, here because this is the representative price in this uh, prices will be expressed. So, prices are in units of consumption in real time. So, we are talking about real wage and then we will be also talking about how this real wage change is going to impact the consumption. Now, on top of this, so when this particular guy is going to supply N S, it means that he or she will be getting some amount of income, right. When I say he or she is getting some amount of income, wherever he or she is supplying, then that will be added, that will be added income to this representative consumer. So, consumer pays a lump sum tax T to the government and receives par units of current consumption in the form of dividend from the firm. So, here once you are born in the economy, so there here we are introducing the a macro variable one. So, what is the macro variable we are introducing here? So, here we are introducing the lump sum tax T and the another factor that we have which is that the representative consumer is also having uh, some extra source of income. So, apart from the N S linked wage rate, this representative consumer is also going to get some amount of dividend. And when I say that there is a lump sum tax T, so lump sum tax that in the economy when you are born then two things are certain, one is death and another is the tax. So, every agent is supposed to pay some amount of tax to the government and government collects that tax. So, once the government is going to collect the tax, then this will be amount T. We are not considering in terms of proportional tax, we are considering only in case of lump sum tax, which means that some fixed amount of income will be deducted as a tax by the government and pi is represented in terms of dividends. So, dividends are always declared in case in the case of some amount percentage. Whatever the consumer earns, it is represented by WNS. So, wage rate is linked with the amount of labor supplied, where W is the wage per hour and N is the number of hour work. Now, let us talk about the disposable income. So, what is the total income of the representative consumer? So, the total income is WNS plus pi. So, this is the dividend that this particular guy is getting. This is the wage rate and this is the labor supply. So, here is W n s plus pi minus here you have the T. So, this T is important because this T goes to the government. So, disposable income you know that you have the personal income minus the tax bearing that you have. So, whatever tax incidence you have on you, you deduct from that and that becomes your disposable. So, this is the disposable. Now, if you write the consumption consumers budget constraint, so how does it look like? It look it looks like this. So, here we have a W n s plus pi minus t. So, here it is c is equal to W n s plus pi minus t. Now, till here we are clear. Now, if you substitute this, so here we had a equation 1. So, here we had h is equal to L plus n s. If I solve for n s here, so what it becomes? It becomes h minus L. So, h minus L that you have it here it is c is equal to w h minus L plus pi minus t. Uh, if you simplify this further then what are we going to get? So, if you bring this w inside so instead of 
uh, n s we are having h minus l because we have assumed that h is equal to l plus n s. So, we are substituting it here once I substitute this here w is equal to h minus l plus pi minus t. So, we can simplify this further is equal to c is equal to minus w l plus w h this we have and pi minus t and if you just bring this side. So, what is the consumption that this particular guy is going to make? So, this particular guy is going to make is nothing but the c plus w l that this particular representative agent is having. So, here it is the, the consumer the, the consumption of the consumer plus the leisure that he has and that is also linked with the wage rate right. So, wage rate multiplied by the leisure amount that this particular guy is have. So, which means that if you just solve for uh, since we have uh, bring we have bought this inside. So, if you think in terms of expenditure how much of the wage rate this particular representative consumer will have to forego attached with the leisure plus how much he is spending on consumption uh, and then this plus sign is a just a, it is a typo here. So, here we are indirectly hinting that that C plus W L it represents nothing but the implicit expenditure on goods and here we have W H plus pi minus T which is nothing but it is the implicit real disposable income. So, this is what we have. So, this particular guy is going to have the W H which means that he can decide about how many hours he has to work. In the same way he has also to decide about how many hours he should not work. Now, he is the king of his 24 hours plus he is going to get the pi plus he uh, minus he is going to pay some amount of tax. So, this is how it looks like how much he is spending and how much he is getting. So, those things are mentioned here. Now, if you try if you try and see how does it look like then here it is. So, if you just work out here when I am writing c is equal to minus w l plus w h t. So, I am talking about this particular equation the consumption. So, if I am mentioning about c is equal to minus w l plus w h plus pi minus t what is the meaning here on this line here you have a leisure 0. So, when I am saying that leisure 0. So, I have only left with this particular whole expression will be equal to 0. So, we will have c is equal to w h plus pi minus t. So, here we have w h plus pi minus t right. Now, once I am saying that this particular from here to here if I am moving this side. So, here what will be the value? So, value will be that since this side c is equal to 0 you have to self solve for l. So, if c is equal to 0 you bring this this side. So, this will be l is equal to h plus pi minus t upon w e. So, so this is how it, it looks like. So, here it will be w. So, this is what we mentioned. So, this particular h plus pi minus t upon w is this. This is the budget line. The slope of this is nothing but the wage rate. So, minus w l how much this particular guy's consumption is going to change with respect to leisure if you are going to calculate that then this will be only the minus w. So, this is how it works here. So, c is equal to minus w l. So, if you just draw a line very nicely drawn line. So, here you have a no leisure. So, if the consumer is working full 24 hours this will be his income. If you have here full leisure no consumption then this particular representative agent is going to get this. If he will be moving around here and here then it is up to him that how much he forgoes the consumption and how much he has the leisure. So, that will be decided by the representative consumer. Now, we will be moving to the next part. Now, here we have what happens when the representative consumer when the budget is when we have the pi which is greater than t. If we have the pi greater than t which means that this representative consumer is having higher dividend compared to tax. If this representative consumer is going to have higher dividend income compared to tax it means that he would not like to work for more number of hours he would reduce the number of labor supply. So, your n s will be lower. So, n superscript s that we wrote in equation 1 this is going to be lower. Now, if this is going to be lower then you will have the kinked budget line. 
So, from B to D, we assume that this representative consumer would not like to walk. He will be starting, he will start walking only when he is almost like a, when his pi is almost equal to T, then this is the scenario where this particular representative agent would like to walk and then think about consumption and leisure. In this zone, he is enjoying the pi is greater than T. So, that is why he does not have to walk. So, point B to D here, this representative agent has zero labor supply, no supply at all. So, that we mention about that the representative consumer that we, we have, this representative consumer is going to have on this line, if he moves, he does not work at all, he does not supply any amount of labor. The increase in dividend is more than sufficient for him. So, maybe you can assume that if I have to give the example, I assume that suppose you have a sudden, uh, you had invested somewhere in the market in Bitcoin or any investment in the stock market, sudden you saw an increase in income. Uh, so, my stock market did well and then you had a good return incurring from that investment. So, if you have incurred a good return, then you do not do not have to. So, you think that now earlier I was working 8 hours and I had very difficult time and I used to even work for 12 hours. Now, I think for me 8 hours is sufficient because I have the income. So, which means that the kind of adjustment that you are making, the significant adjustment that you are having, that is represented by this, that you this particular guy has not also which means that you have taken leave for two months, three months from your office and you do not care about you lost your you left your job also because you have sufficient income now and you are thinking about some alternative plans. So, this particular uh, line speaks about those things that when you have a sudden increase in income then this is going to have the impact on the labor supply. So, this is how it looks like. Then we walk out with the consumer optimization case that what will be the level of optimization for this representative consumer. If we have defined the representative consumer with well, de well defined budget constraint which has the well defined indifference curve, can we have the equilibrium level where the, we can say that this representative consumer is optimally better here, this we are trying to investigate now. So, here we have the consumer optimization, what is that? the MRS LC that marginal rate of substitution is equal to real wage. So, the, this, this is how is it, it is looking like. So, here we have the H. So, here we have I 1 and here we have F and E. So, here you can think about the F point at point F since it is cutting down. So, here you can think about the slope. The slope of this uh, the budget constraint is greater which means the slope of the so, MRS LC terms if you think about then MRS LC term it is greater than the budget constraint, slope of the budget constraint. At point E it is just opposite, so these two will not. At point H it is the appropriate case because it is on the higher indifference curve and it is also tangent to the budget line. So, this I 1 becomes the case. So, here the idea behind this is that since we have already superimposed the idea of pi is greater than t. So, we will be trying to see that given this the opportunity that this representative consumer is having how much he is going for utilization of this. So, he whether he will be moving from this side or from here he will be now deciding about. So, at point h the corresponding consumption and corresponding leisure is the consumer optimized consumption and leisure. So, this is how we explore. Now, in terms of optimization framework, this is how it looks like that we will be setting up the optimization problem with the help of you can go by the method substitution or you can go by the Langridge multiplier. You can optimize this and get the C and L. So, here it is U C L subject to C is equal to W H minus L plus pi minus T. So, this is how we can introduce. So, you can write it as max U C L plus lambda here we have the budget constant C minus W H minus L and then you can take the first order condition with respect to C and L and find it out. So, then you will easily come to know that what is the optimal level of consumption and leisure that we have. Now, here we have the comparative statics that I had mentioned that will also have the comparative statics. So, once we have worked out with the consumer optimization. So, in case of consumer optimization, we saw that the point H become the natural choice 
for the consumer optimization. Now what happens when we have different types of comparative statics? So when I, once I say that we have the, so here we are saying that an increase in pi minus t for the consumer. So what happens if this representative consumer is going to see the increase in the tax adjusted dividend income? If this particular guy is having a more of pi, right? then how he or she is going to change the level of consumption and leisure. Now here if we are having at the, this is the baseline budget constraint. So here we are having A, B, D. Now with the increase in pi, here you can see that here you have the parallel shift in the budget line. So budget line shifts parallelly. So once we have the budget line shifting parallelly to this, then here you have F, J, D. The moment you are here you have F, J, D, then this shows this. So here we have a K. Now here when I am saying that here it is C1 is equal to I1. So here we have this. We are continuously seeing that this representative consumer after seeing this, he will have more of income effect which means that his income is increasing which also shows that he would like to go for more of a consumption and more of a leisure so which means that this increase income will of course be uh, be higher for from the consumption side and it will also lead to augmentation of the leisure so maybe he is now having more of pi then this will of course will have positive bearing on this but at the same time he would also like to work for less number of hours and this will be leading to increase in leisure also. So this is how we are talking about. Now here we have the increase in real wage. Now here the increase in real wage has lot of implications. Now once we have the increase in real wage then increase in real wage you have to understand that here we are talking about two things. First thing is that when I say that when you have the increase in wage rate then whether we are we are sure that the consumption will increase. But what will happen to leisure whether leisure is going to increase or not if the leisure is not going to increase then how are we going to decide about. So in that context it becomes critically important to understand from the perspective that suppose for example if I give you the example that you used to work earlier for 8 hours now you have, have income increase or wage rate or there has been promotion and then you are sudden the wage income has increased so whether this increase in income the kind of income effect that you have whether this is leading to the substitution effect also whether you were earlier working and earning 4000 but now your salary has increased so per hour your salary or per day your salary has increased. Now you think that earlier I used to work in a month almost 28 days but now my salary has increased and I am satisfied with that I do not want more consumption. So I think if I work for even 20 days I will save the 8 days for my rest of the activities then also I will have the same level of income and I will not compromise on my consumption. So it is always good to go for less number of, of working hours. So those conditions we are trying to superimpose here in this scenario. So here we have the considering consumption and leisure as normal good what happens when there is increase in wage rate. So the original line is A, B, D and the original budget constraint we have A, B, D. The moment we see so uh, the consumer is at equilibrium at F. He is asking for C1 and L1. Now when we see increase in wage rate, so this uh, shift upward, so now the new budget constraint is EBD. Now the consumer is at point H, right? but this point H that you have, you can see that the at this point H, the consumer whatever the, the income effect that this particular guy is going to have, it is leading to increase in consumption but leisure remains same and this is partly because despite this uh, income effect that this guy is having there is substitution effect also playing a role. So we now walk out with this we keep the, the income of the consumer same which means that we just make sure that we do not give him enough dividend or we are not working out with further taxes. So we are just keeping the same. 
so that he we, he remains on the same original budget line that he had earlier or original indifference curve. Now, if we try to bring him on the original indifference curve, then we draw a parallel line which will have the same slope like the newly shifted budget line. Now, you can see that now the consumer is uh, moving from F to O. So, at point O, you will see that the consumer is having the consumption, but leisure is declining, right. So, consumption has marginally increased, but leisure is declining. Now, what we saw here at point H that with this income effect, the consumer was having good time. So, which means that he was having more of consumption, but no effect on leisure. But because of substitution effect that you have, we can see that the leisure is also getting costlier and then here you have the impact on the consumption though it is on positive side. So, the movement from F to A O that we call it as the substitution effect from O to H we call it as the income effect. So, both these are having important role the uh, underlying idea is that because both substitution effect and the income effect both are having reinforcing effect on the consumption. So, consumption will, will simply increase, but we can see that the income effect is not impacting the, uh, the leisure, but the substitution effect is impacting the leisure, which means that it will depend upon the, the, con, uh, the punitive consumer whether the increase in wage rate will lead to increase in uh, leisure or decrease in leisure, but from the income effect side one thing is sure that consumption will increase. So, overall conclusion from this is that your consumption will rise as a result of the increase in wage rate and leisure may rise or fall depending upon the preference of the representative consumer. So, what is the learning here? Learning here is that in most of the scenarios when we think that we have the consumption and leisure framework or the income and substitution effect. If the income substitution effect are, are having reinforcing effect on one particular variable, then the result become clear. If it is not, then you have the confusion over there. And in real life also, it has been seen in many countries that even if you have the wage rate increase, it does not translate into more, num more labor supply or the increase or decrease in leisure. People are rationalized and they are rational and they decide about how much, how many number of hours they have to supply and how many number of hours they have to use it for leisure. But the ultimate result is not very clear from this analysis. I am stopping it here, we will continue in the next session. Thank you, thank you so much.